because when something happens, like your partner leaves toothpaste in the sink, and you don't like it, and you get in a little spat over it, and then all of a sudden they decide that they want to leave because there's no solid foundation, and or or there's something happening outside where they their eyes are wandering, and they look at this sweet young thing over there, and they say, "Woo!" And then some, so they leave. I want to tell you, the grass is not greener on the other side. That is what counting the cost means when you enter into a relationship with God. I believe that we're to put God first, not our relationships, not our jobs, not even our children. Not even our dogs. <laughs> uh, except for, you know, somebody sent me this cute thing about saying that dogs is God backwards. So, um, um, but it's not to be entered into lightly. But with reverence and thoughtfulness and reverence to God. And in that, each person must count the cost. Sometimes the problem is one person's counting the cost, and the other person doesn't have any clue about what it means. And then there's problems. And so, my friends, when we're in relationships with one another, but more importantly, when we're in a relationship with God, we must realize to count the cost. Because it will cost us something. But the rewards are eternal. Amen. That's the great thing. There's this also truth in Christian life. If a person is daunted by the high demands of Christ, we must remember that we are not in this alone. That Jesus himself needed help carrying his cross. And Jesus will be with us as we carry ours. We are not in this alone. Which brings me to point number three. Let God be God. Let God be God. Now, God is an amazing God. I am so amazed all the time. When I was ordained into ministry, someone gave me Philippians 1.6. And this isn't just my verse, this is a verse for you. And so I want to read it to you. Philippians 1.6 says this. And I am convinced, and I am sure of this very thing, that God who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return. Developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. So this tells me that God is able. That God who began the work in you is able to carry it on through. If you just let God be God. Now, I don't know about you, but I've tried to do God's work. And sometimes I forget that God can do a better job than I can, Amen. if I can just learn to let go, and let God. Now, I am responsible to pick up my own cross, and do what I am supposed to do, and do what I'm supposed to be doing, what God has called me to do, and allow God to do the rest. Sometimes we get worried and we, we try to fix other people. We try to pick up their cross and we try to fix on them instead of worrying about what we ought to be doing. Sometimes I think that that's easier than to pick, pick up your own cross and let God be God. 
Now, I am not perfect at this. I have learned and I have gotten much better at practicing this letting God be God business. <laughs> it's a lifetime journey. It's a spiritual journey. Letting God have first place in your life is not easy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And it does take work. <clears throat> but we you will find when you find that balance, you will you will understand. And then you will want to strive to keep that balance because you know that you know that you know there is that place. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5.24 is the next scripture. And it tells us that faithful is God who is calling you. And God is trustworthy and will do it. Will do what? God is faithful to help you. God is faithful and reliable. God is trustworthy. And whatever we ask for, God promises. If it's asked by in God's will, it will be done. What will God do for us? God promises to be God. If we let go <coughs> and let God. And we can depend on God no matter what. Because God, by God, you were called into this companionship, into this relationship <coughs> with God through Christ. Amazing things happen when we carry our cross, we count the cost, and we let God be God. This morning, I have created some crosses for you as a reminder to, to let God be God. Now, of course, these are little. And God has called us all to carry a cross. And so hopefully this will remind you of what you heard today. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.